tomboy drew um and this is going to be a quick video and i do promise it's going to be quick because this top gets huge in itself and um it's there's no way that i can complete it in one video so i'm going to break this topic down into multiple videos um that are like learning videos and you're asking what is this going to be and you already know because of the title of the video but um this is what is a general plan and for those that know what it is great um maybe this can be a refresher for you um for those that don't know um great as well because you're going to learn something that is vital for you because all of us live in a city town or county area so um let's jump right into this So when you first open up a general plan, what do you see? What do you expect to see? Of course, you're going to see um, a title page, the year of the document, who worked on this document. Um, you're going to flip that page and you're going to see um, a table of contents, of course. But what is the very first important thing that you need to look for or what you're going to see when you flip that page to a general plan, right? In the general plan. Um, the very first thing you're going to see is a statement of community goals and development policies right those are the very first things you should be reading that are really of importance right and those two things are considered to be the city's or the town or the county's vision okay that's that's the vision of this particular whatever this is whoever's uh, general plan you're reading that's the vision of this of that city so yeah that's important you need to read that okay so after you read the vision for this city um, what do you expect to see next right you're gonna see different chapters of course but what we call these different chapters in the urban planning field we call them elements so um jurisdictions typically have seven to eight elements within a general plan and those are like the standard ones but those aren't always what you only have to have a lot of times you'll see various other elements within the general plan outside of those seven to eight normal ones now in this uh, video i'm just going to discuss real real quickly the um seven to eight that you're typically going to see within a general plan for a city okay all right all right so after you read the vision for the city which is the statement of community goals and development policies the next things that you should see are the elements like i said but what is the first element the very first element that you should see or read is um, very important, okay? If you open up a general plan and you do not see this element within that general plan, I want you to close that general plan and um, slide that back to them, to the city and um, get up out of that city because something is seriously wrong if you do not see this element within a general plan. So that element is the land use element okay and you're like what is that drew what is that um basically think of it this way land use usage of land so how a, a, a city is to build out the various types of land use types okay so that you're like what is that okay all right um so you'll see that as um agriculture open space um, commercial, industrial, residential, 
And then those uh, categories can be further broken down into subcategories. For instance, with residential, it can be broken down to, into low density residential, medium density residential, medium high density residential, high density residential, and for commercial, for instance, general commercial, heavy commercial. Uh, for industrial, it can be light industrial, heavy industrial. However, um, you shouldn't have so many categories within um, land use types. That should be left to zoning, which we'll discuss in a different video. But uh, for the purposes of this, I just want to let you guys know that when you see so many um, land use types, that's a problem because a general uh, plan should be very vague, but um, it's a policy document. So you shouldn't be pinpointing things to the very minute little small details that should be left up to zoning in the zoning ordinance but um yeah that's some of the land use types that you will see in a general plan all right okay so i want to make a quick disclaimer um the way that I'm listing out these elements are is not how you're always going to see them laid out within a general plan. It's not always going to be in this order. The most important thing that you should take away from this is that these elements are the standard ones and these are what you should see all the time within a general plan in any jurisdiction that you're going to. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, the next element that you should see within a general plan is the circulation element also known as the mobility element sometimes um, and we're not just talking about vehicles people we are also talking about pedestrian connectivity such as trails and sidewalks right we're also talking about public transportation buses and light rail and we're also um, talking about bike lanes and we're going to be discussing within this element how we're safely and, and in a timely manner getting people from point A to point B within the city. And that includes not just us general public, right? This also includes our emergency uh, uh, d departments such as police and fire, right? There has to be an emergency access plan, right? An evacuation plan. So this, so this um, element is very important because everyone pretty much has a car nowadays and uh, being mobile is very important, whether it's on foot or within a, your own personal vehicle or within a public transportation vehicle. It's important to get, always get people in, to point A to point B to point C to point D and back again in a safely and timely manner. Circulation element. The next element is the housing or growth area element. And this one discusses like how we're growing as a city. So it's going to be a lot of um, information about um, uh, population growth, right? That you get from the census and things like that. And it's going to talk about what types of um, growth we're having. What type of population do we have? Is it young or is it old or is it in the middle? Um, we're going to talk about the employment of these of this population, uh, that population. What type of um, housing types is that population liking? Is it going to be multifamily? Is it single family residential? Are they living in dorms? Um, things like that. So the housing and growth element is very important because it discusses how the city is growing. It's going to basically talk about by the year 2050, this city is going to go from 78,000 to 250,000. How are we going to um, build enough housing and enough commercial and enough industrial and enough employment and enough roadways for all these people? So that's what that um, element is about. So this element that I'm about to discuss is like one of my favorites because I used to dabble in this before I became an urban planner, which is a city planner, which you I should know because I did a video on it, right? So the next one is the conservation element, also known as 
the environmental planning element, right? So this one is one of my favorites because um, it's, it's very important. There should always be a balance between the natural and built environment. There should be a balance, not an imbalance, okay? Um, so within a city uh, or in, within this element, you're going to discuss things such as air quality, water quality, watersheds, flood control, uh, reclamation of land, wildlife, biological resources, natural resources, right? You're going to discuss all those different things within that element. So that one's my favorite. Um, but yeah, so conservation, environmental planning. All right, so you built all these houses for uh, the citizens of your community or city, and now you have all this employment set up for these citizens, right? But what are they about to be doing? They need to have fun, right? They need to have places to go, right? During the weekends and during the weekdays, they need to be able to take their children someplace, right? So the next one is recreation. And that discusses open space, parkland, uh, parks, community parks, pocket parks. Um, we have to have a place for um, our citizens to go and for them to enjoy themselves within a city. So recreation is a fun one. Um, that's a good element. You should always see that in your general plan. So this one is very important when you're moving to a city from like, let's say you're moving out of state and you're going to a new city or you're moving to a new city within the current state that you're in. You should always want to know how a city is setting up their safety. So um, this one is the safety element. It discusses how uh, the city plans on protecting its community from artificial and natural hazards and how we how they set up their evacuation plans and their fire access plans and how long it should take the fire to get from point A to point B. What's their uh, typical time frames of getting their fire trucks to a point of concern, right? Seven minutes or something like that. Or does it take this city 20 minutes? I'm not about to move there. You can, but I won't. Um, but that's what this um, element discusses. It discusses how community plans on protecting its community, right? And also what I've seen in some, they further break it down as far as how the built environment can um, either uh, negatively or positively impact um, the safety of some of a person or its community right so for instance if you allow uh, new buildings to be built without proper lighting or without security and stuff like that there's pockets of where there's no light so people get burglarized the built environment and how it's set up and how it's designed also affects um, the safety of a community The next element is the energy element and this element basically discusses um, and identifies uh, policies um, that encourage and provide incentives for energy efficiency um, within a city. That can be from making sure that when a developer comes in such as like let's say Taylor Morrison or KB Homes that they have to or there's policies where they have to include energy efficient appliances within these new houses right in these new buildings right or um, making sure that when an apartment complex comes in that they're adding an electric car charging station for these um, hybrid cars or whatnot or electric cars so that is what the energy um, element is about it's about energy efficiency right we want to be heading towards that route instead of continuously forever be using fossil fuels The last element is noise, right? And we're not just talking about noise from people. We're also discussing um, airport noise. For instance, if you live in close proximity to an airport, um, construction noise from construction of new housing or new uh, commercial buildings. When shall this um, construction 
be allowed to commence and when shall it stop okay so we discussed all eight elements hopefully you enjoyed this video um leave some comments down below about this video and anything else you want me to discuss with regards to urban planning or city planning or environmental planning too i can discuss that as well so um hopefully you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up all right talk to you guys later